Hello again, everyone. Uh, today's video is going to talk about priming. I mentioned in my last video uh, that I'm going to be priming uh, the interior components of my uh, of my Sling TSI, the longer ones, the ones that I can't alodyne bondurite. So uh, anyway, today we knew it was going to be a real pretty day. So uh, I decided to set aside the morning to prime uh, the parts to the rest of the empennage that I have not already primed. So uh, I, I just wanted to go over the process that I'm using, and then uh, I've got some little video clips of uh, a breakdown of some of the, the individual parts of the PPE and my paint gun and such. So uh, basically you start off with uh, uh, getting your parts labeled, uh, setting up somewhere outside was what I chose. Um, I got my hose and uh, some simple green uh it's simple green extreme or aviation extreme. Uh, so I have that in a spray bottle. I have a Scotch Bright pad. I'm using the red ones. They're kind of a maroon color. I'll show a clip of that too. Uh, and basically, what you're trying to do, um, it, there's about three steps that I'm taking. One is to clean the part just anyway. You would need to clean all your parts, get all the manufacturing oils and that sort of thing off of your parts. Um, the second thing I'm trying to do is if you're going to prime, uh, you want to sort of scratch up the surface to give the primer something to bite into. So that's the mechanical adhesion. So uh, I'm using Scotch-Brite pads and uh, they sort of recommend that you do it in a checkerboard fashion. So uh, just sort of make sure you're going two different directions. The, uh, the third thing I'm doing is I'm using a chemical called Pre-Coat. And it's a, it's a chemical that I think was uh, produced as an alternative to more toxic, uh, the allodyne bondurite systems or some of the other stuff that's um, more toxic for the environment. The military's using it, Boeing's using it. Um, I don't think uh, anybody thinks it's as good as the others. It's just a lot safer. It's non-toxic, uh, you, you just wash it off. Um, there's no real precautions. I, I do wear gloves when I'm using it, but I'm, I'm not sure that's even necessary. But so the, uh, so I'm, I'm going ahead and I'm scuffing up my parts with uh, simple green. Uh, then I rinse everything down and then I get out the pre-coat and I, I'm using the Scotch-Brite pads a second time. Uh, but this time, instead of simple green, I'm spraying it with this pre-coat. Uh, it, it bubbles up a little bit, not as much as simple green. And uh, you, you, uh, you sort of spray it on and get a good coating. Uh, and you, you do your scratch etching, work it into the, the aluminum. Uh, then you spray it again and sort of give it one more once over. And then you rinse it off. So uh, supposedly this, this cleans it, gets rid of any surface contaminant, corrosion, and it leaves behind some sort of layer of, that promotes adhesion with the primer. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, so anyway, th that's the process. It's um, recommended online in a lot of places. People have been doing it for a long time. So I decided to go that way. So, and then the next step is to hang up your parts and paint. And I've got a little video of me uh, looking like a big marshmallow painting a bunch of parts. So, um, the uh, still trying to figure out the settings on my gun, get that dialed in. Again, this was like my third painting session. Uh, the first two were very brief. I just did a couple of parts. Uh, so I'm still getting that dialed in and, and learning exactly how much paint to, uh, uh, to dial in on the paint gun and how much air and how fast to do the, the strokes and everything. So anyway, uh, I thought it turned out pretty good for my first real attempt at painting a lot of parts. Um, went through uh, uh, two, two uh, I don't know, the container that attaches to the gun. I filled that twice. Uh, so I used that much. I think it's like 600 mLs uh, and uh, got it done. So uh, we're all done. I'm going to show you a couple of video clips of the process and uh, let you see what I did. So for uh, cleaning the skins that I'm going to paint, I'm uh, using Scotch-Brite pads. And these are the, uh, you get them in a case. They're the red. Here's the box with the part number. What I'm doing is uh, cutting them into thirds. It makes it a little more manageable. 
and uh, keeps you from wasting them. So I wanted to show some of the uh, protective equipment I was wearing when I was spraying that chromated primer. I'm kind of an overkill person, but uh, the, uh, the, the hood I was wearing is a forced air hood and it's a hobby air system. Uh, it's still a, this is, this is a used one I got on eBay for a little over a hundred dollars. And uh, the guy I bought this from used it to paint a plane project. There's yellow all over the hose, so I think he was maybe he was doing a Piper Cub or something. But um, the uh, this is a fan unit that basically just blows forced air. It almost sounds like a vacuum cleaner, but it's uh, it's got a HEPA filter. This is not a filter. This is for dust and debris, not for anything. Uh, it, it doesn't have a carbon filter or anything. Uh, the idea is that you put this box somewhere well away from your painting area, indoors, well away. It has a, a 50, 50 foot primary hose and then it's got some extensions so you can get it pretty far away. And then you have a couple different options. Uh, again, because I bought this used, it came with everything that the guy had. So he had a couple different options in hoods. This one is uh, the, the hose just pumps air into the hood and it's got a, uh, I don't know if you can see this, it has a lens cover. He, he gave me a whole stack of these that just, they, they're adhesive on the side. And then when you get dirty, you can just peel it off and put a new one on. Uh, this one, the whole hood inflates. Uh, the other option is uh, a face mask. And this is just forced fresh air ventilation. And then you put a hood over it. And uh, th this is just a hood just to, uh, again, keep paint spray off of you. Uh, the other piece of equipment is a Tyvek suit. I got these on uh, Amazon for very cheap. I've used this one a couple times now. It's starting to rip, but they're just disposable. So this is the gun I'm using to spray this primer. It's a, uh, a Harbor Freight, and this one is a Spectrum HTE. I think they call it uh, the Black Widow or something. Um, I've added, again, a Harbor Freight um, pressure regulator, and this is a uh, filter for water and contaminants. Uh, this is, uh, what's important about this is it's a 1.3 is what the tip is. Uh, I was told that that was the appropriate size for uh, spraying the primer that I'm using. So uh, that's what I'm using. It's, um, I think this, this gun is a, a couple hundred bucks. Um, I got it on sale with a coupon from Harbor Freight, which you can do from time to time and it makes it a little cheaper. To clean up my gun uh, after I spray, I'm using uh, this product. It's a 3M high power spray gun cleaner. I got this again at Harbor Freight. They sell it other places, but Harbor Freight actually had a pretty good price on it. It has a little straw like you'd see on WD-40 or something um, that helps you get into the crevices. I found that uh, spraying your gun down immediately, as soon as you're done painting, you just soak it down, the, the primer comes right off. But if you wait even five minutes, uh, you gotta work at it. Uh, the uh, the instructions for this paint actually recommend MEK as a cleanup. Unfortunately, I can't find real MEK anywhere locally. I'm gonna have to order it online. Uh, but again, as long as you attack the gun really quick right after you're done spraying, uh, this is basically just acetone. Uh, it's a high pressure acetone spray. It does really well. So that's that's what I'm using. So I've. Uh... I've hung up all the uh, the parts that I primed earlier this morning into my shop. They're they're dry. They're just uh, I'm gonna let them hang for 24 hours before I do anything else to them. But uh, I'm not sure how good the lighting is. But uh, these are all the parts that were too long uh, to put in my iodine tanks. You can kind of see the uh, I primed the inside of this skin, um, and I have a couple other skins over there. But uh, 
I've got the entire empennage either fonderite, alodyned, or primed at this point. So time to move on.